This is Warren's Most Liked segment in which you can share how you got started with Android, the problems you had along the way and much more. If you don't know what to say, we'll help you along the way. And now to close today's episode, my most favorite segment of the podcast, The Android Journey Story. John, you want to introduce our guest, even though he's no longer a guest now, uh, you've heard from him, but let's officially introduce our friend Amir. Welcome, Amir. We're glad to have you, and we're looking forward to hearing about your Android journey. So how long, when was your first dabbling of in, in Android, and how long have you been with us? Have you been going back and forth? I know you were an I iOS user at one point. Have you always been, or have you gone back and forth over the years? Yeah, first and foremost, it's an honor to be here. And you know, I should have said it earlier, but it is really an honor to be part of this awesome show. And to be honest, my Android journey is a, a nexus journey. I started back in 2014 with um, Google Nexus 5, which was released uh, late 2013. So. It is officially, or rather it was officially, my first Android handset. And uh, I kept coming to Android devices alongside my iPhones, um, Nexus 6, Nexus 5P, Nexus 6P. And, uh, you know, those were secondary devices, apart from some minor exceptions with Nexus 5P and Nexus 6P. You know, I used to own them for a while without an iPhone just to test how accessibility uh, has improved. And then I kept returning to iPhones, various iPhones. You know, I started with iPhone 4S and they just came on until I purchased my 14 Pro Max. And sometimes I used to have Nexus devices or Nexuses actually. And sometimes I used to play with uh, the newer Galaxy devices, S21, S22, uh, the Note uh, 20, if I'm not mistaken. But in my opinion, and I should uh, put it frankly, uh, you know, those days, accessibility on Android hasn't, hasn't been ready for prime time. It needed time to develop, and it still needs in some areas, I suppose. But it has come a long way and now I can use it satisfactorily. Uh, I may miss some features on the iOS side, you know, some voiceover features, to be honest, but I do have a lot to enjoy and relish on the Android side. And to give you a little history, I started with S60 Symbian devices, Nokia N82, um, Nokia 66, 60 or no 6600 if i'm not mistaken so as an accessibility tester uh, language translator and tutor i do have a lot to talk about access points when it comes to operating systems and again to just finish my first segment it was john who helped me make the ultimate decision and switch to the s23 ultra of course, I first purchased the uh, A54 to see how it goes, but then I sold it and switched to the S23 Ultra. So you have John to blame. Uh, should you decide not to like the uh, John Galaxy is awesome. anymore? You know, John is awesome. When I first <laughs> listened to yeah, what what he was doing with talkbacks, you know, just uh, just using some commands to enable the Google version, disable the Samsung version. I said, oh my God, this is the, the wizard. This is the guy I want. And it, when it is doable <laughs> on Android, I have to make the switch because I like tinkering with devices and Android allows me to do that. Yeah, I always say, you know, their voiceover has its strengths, talkback has its strengths, but they're they're both accessible enough that we as blind users can still make the choice. You know, we have that choice. And if, if we like to take her with our devices, you know, we're going to choose Android for the same reason a sighted person would choose Android. We're not, 
limited to having to do it one way. And that's, that's what I, uh, you know, that's what I like to encourage people. Like I don't make them switch. I just want them to know they can, if they, if they want to. Yeah. John is quite helpful. I, I've learned a lot from him and it is great that we have people like John, like Warren, like Karine, uh, who know a lot about Android accessibility and know a lot about the other side, the iOS side, and can help people make great decisions if they need to. You guys are absolutely correct because, you know, like now, though, it's a matter of uh, uh, style, you, whether you like your pants baggy or you want them straight, that kind of thing. Uh, but matter of accessibility i think we're all caught up to each other now amir tell me you've been here you know back and forth since 2014. yeah i know that some people have seen the nexus 5 as probably one of the iconic uh, yeah. android devices do you feel that way or which of these android devices that you've gone through would be something that you kind of be uh, being nostalgic about something you'd like to have again. Uh, I mean, from antiquity, I mean, going back several years back. Well, uh, the, the, the 6P, uh, I suppose, is my absolute favorite because of its speakers, uh, because of its battery life. It was a Huawei device, if I'm not mistaken. And I used to have it for some years and then uh, my sister uh, came to me and said, oh, if you are with iPhone, let me use it. And she kept using it for a long while. I don't know. Uh, she just got rid of it two years ago. So it was operational until 2021, I suppose. And Wow. That's, yeah, that, that's that, that was. Six, yeah, 6P. The 6P was yeah. my first Android, my first full-time Android phone. Um I, I tried it earlier on with the Nexus 5, ended up returning it. But the 6P, the 6P is the first one I kept. And yeah, it was made by Huawei. I love it. It had that design of like, um, kind of like what the Pixels look like now. It had like that camera visor thing on the back. Yeah. And it, it was a cool looking phone. I, I wore that thing out. The screen was cracked. Like it, <laughs> it was shattered. I was still using it. My volume buttons fell off that thing. Like I had... I remember the, my wedding when I got married, that was my phone. And I had like a piece of tape, like packing tape wrapped around the thing <laughs> to keep the volume buttons on because they had broken off. Like I wore that thing out. Oh, boy. Uh, John, uh, that's what happens when you don't have a phone in a case. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, use cases now. I've been trying to <laughs> preach to you all this time. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have to have to learn for themselves, you know. <laughs> but you know what? It's interesting you guys mentioned the 6P. I still have both. Um, actually, I even have Nexus 4. I have all of them. Oh, and boy. frankly, yes, I, I truly like the um the 6P and I also like the regular 6. The 6P was probably the first uh Android uh, phone that we had that was kind of premium. I mean, from Google, if you will, because uh, it, it has all that nice feel to it. And John, yeah, that camera bump on it. I like that camera bump on it, too. So the P is a great phone, but I, I have all four of them. The uh, 4, 5, 5X, uh, 6, and 6P. Yeah. Uh, God damn it, my museum, yeah. A turning point happened to me, and it was uh, the moment... Google added multi-finger gestures to talk back. You know, that was an absolute, you know, breaking point for me. You know, I mean, the lack of those. So I needed them. I loved them on the Android side. And the moment it was added, I said, okay, I'm getting closer to the ultimate dream of switching. Yeah, that was probably the biggest shift, I think, in the history of TalkBack. That was a big deal for a lot of people. I... So I, you know, I've gone on record saying I love the angle gestures, you know, but even as being a huge fan of the angle gestures, I love having multi-finger gestures too, because it just gives me more gestures, you know, I need more <laughs> gestures to sign actions to, you know, you could be so much more productive that way. But John, I keep forgetting them. I mean, the angled ones. I'm, I'm honest with you. I, I keep 
just forgetting all of them. So which was which? Uh, up and left, left and, I don't know, left and down. I, I can't grab the concept. And that is quite saddening <laughs> on my part. Well, the good news, though, is that you could reassign them to something that you would yeah, like to use them for. Absolutely. And, and I think that's the beauty of all of this. And of uh, uh, there are certain things. I know I used to use my left-right um, scrub, as I call it, uh, to open my actions. But now that we have actions directly into TalkBack, I don't use that anymore. But yeah. so one could always change that to something that makes more sense to them. Because I don't use the, uh, you know... Um, going home you know so i would even that angle would even do that to go home or bring down notifications i don't use any of those so uh in such instances i could reassign them to something else totally um that i would like to use it for so i'm not using it for what it's intended for so that's the beauty of those uh angler uh gestures and the good news also, like you said, John, we have those other multi-fingers, you know, tapping. If you like to beat your phone, you can use that to beat up the phone. That's all up to you. And we have that choice. I like the whole thing that we got. Sure. Yeah, regarding, uh, first, let me welcome Amir. Thank you, Karine. And um, I want to say that personally, I see that uh, you are a value and added value to the group. Uh, the blind user users group. And, uh, you know, you are from the people who are able to give valid points and to discuss them well. So this is my personal opinion. I wanted just to, to, to say it. And uh, regarding the uh, one or angular gestures, I think it depends on how much you are used to them. So for me, I prefer them much more than the multi-finger ones. Okay, I'm like John. I like to have choice because this will give me more abilities or more capabilities to be able to assign gestures, especially <laughs> that I'm a Jishuo user. So I have much more um, things to assign to, to the gestures. However, I started using Android with those angular gestures. So like it is like my finger is just so much used to those gestures to the point that I, they are the basic gestures that I use for the basic things that I use so much. And there's something that people sometimes forget, which is the Symbian touch screen. So Symbians, when they have the touch screen, uh, mobile speak used to have those gestures. So people who are using the mode of mobile speak that was using those gestures just felt familiar uh, when they uh, switched to Android. And this is what happened to me, actually. When I switched, when I, switched I wasn't feeling like, Oh, bad! What's what are those gestures? How how can they perform? No, because this this was something that I was used to because I spent six months before using the uh, touch screen, the Symbian C six. So yeah, I think this makes uh, like a difference. And uh, at the end of the day, of it, it, it's just a matter of choice. And the good thing that Google is not removing or getting rid of those uh, gestures. Good for you, Kerry because uh, I was using the Nuance Talks and Zoom, and I wasn't familiar with them, sadly. That really makes a makes difference to the person who is... It, it sure does. Yeah. It sure does. You're right. And I think that um, talking about that uh, gestures from the mobile speak, Karen, I think you and I both have that same experience. I think I was using mine with either Nokia 58 Express or something, one of those music based, uh, but it had a touch screen. And so I got fam familiar with that. So when I came to Android and seeing those gestures, uh, I think I was at home, just like you felt. Now that you're using the uh, Galaxy S23 uh, Ultra, really, you're finding it to be what you've been wanting. And because you've talked about it on the uh, Telegram group and all of that. Are there any areas, you know, in general that you're not happy with? I know everything always has a little trade-off, doesn't it? Well, um, the fingerprint sensor can be or should be a little better. Or maybe when I come from the iOS side, with my face recognition being almost impeccable and accurate, uh, the fingerprint sensor. Um, maybe it, it can be better. It, it works 90%, I say, but sometimes it keeps failing my registered finger. 
And, you know, uh, apart from that, the device is great. The battery life is good. Speakers are awesome. But hopefully, I'd like to see more accessible apps, truly accessible. I mean, accessible dictionaries, RSS readers. That is my ultimate dream. So um, some of the apps I used to have on the iOS side, uh, to be frank, don't have accessible versions or uh, perfectly accessible versions on the Android side. Usable ones, sure, yes, but not in that sense accessible. But these are minor complaints, really. I can get my work done. Uh, and in some aspects, I mean, even reading Persian, for example, it works better than my iPhones. It can switch more easily between um, eSpeak and Google TTS or any other engine that I want. Something I, I couldn't do easily on my iPhone. So I can read Persian much more easily. And I do have some complaints, some minor ones, you know, not being able, for example, to have Google Assistant offline when the airplane mode is on, for example. But other than these, um, the device is stellar and I love every aspect of it. Wonderful, Amir. That's a great story to hear. And frankly, we thank you so much that you found the time to come on. And we just want to use this opportunity to thank you for uh, stopping by. And by the way, we do have something called the listener guest appearance. In other words, at any time you want to come back on, be a guest listener appearance or whatever, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, that, by the way, goes out to every listener out there. Anytime you want to come on as guest, uh, feel free to come in. Just let us know ahead of time. So we'll send you the URL from which to join us. And uh, coming up, though, we want you guys to know that we would be having that um, three-year anniversary. And again, we do encourage you to join us because... That's going to be a wonderful time to get to hear from you guys and interact with you guys and interact with other listeners of the BAU podcast. Thank you, Warren. And let me uh, just use this opportunity once more to thank everyone for giving me this honor, uh, John, Karine, and you. And rest assured, I'll come here quite frequently to provide uh, application demonstrations or maybe some tips. Uh, I'm into podcasting. I do it in Persian, sometimes in English. So that would be a huge honor to provide app demonstrations or some tips from time to time. So I do my best or I put my best foot forward to come here from time to time. So since you are all uh, taking the opportunity, I'm going to take the opportunity as well to, to ask you if you like to, if you are into written content. Um, you know, I think you are able to uh, give good stuff to the accessible Android website as a part of the team. I just encourage you, if you ever have an accessible application or like you have an opinion piece or uh, you want to demonstrate anything, so you are welcome to do it. And if you have any time, a feedback, you are always welcome. And like the, the app that you were talking about, the accessibility of the app, just you can uh, reach me, reach Saleh, reach the email, whatever the way you prefer. We are always here and we like to have collaboration with you. Absolutely, Karine. I love your website. I love what you're doing with the website. You know, uh, the Android arena, the access arena uh, affecting Android really needs a website like that. And the better it becomes, the more apps it offers the better reviews it provides, the more blind people will make the switch or at least uh, you know, find the belly to try Android. So I do admire what you're doing over there. And I do hope to be able to contribute a lot. And I'll do that in the near future, rest assured. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Actually, we, we can't do anything uh, alone. You know, It's a small team at the end of the day. And with our, with our contributions, of people that are, that are able to know what they are doing, we can do anything. Absolutely. And in passing, I love your pieces over there. So I encourage people to go there and take a look at what Karine 
has uh, published over there. Thank you. That's an honor, and I truly appreciate appreciate it.